I've talked a lot about my EOS film cameras on this channel. Today I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to talk about my old school manual focus Canon FD cameras. As you know, over the past few years, I've got really comfortable with my EOS film cameras, which have become essentially my workhorse cameras. These are the cameras I use constantly to shoot film with. Over the years, they've complemented my EOS digital cameras nicely, and they've given me a great set of tools to accomplish what I want to accomplish on film. That being said, it's always nice to have some old school manual focus film cameras around. I'll do individual videos on these cameras later, but for now, here's a quick run through of my four manual focus Canon FD cameras in no specific order. First up is the Canon F1. This is technically the second version of the F1. The first version was nearly identical. The second version just had some slight modifications and improvements over the first one. This was released in September of 1976 and was Canon's pro level 35 millimeter film camera. The features that made it pro were how customizable it was with the interchangeable focusing screens, the interchangeable viewfinder, as well as the faster shutter speed, one two thousandth of a second, as opposed to some of their other models below this that only went up to one one thousandth. The build quality on this camera is extremely high, um, pretty much completely metal. And it, uh, just, just like a handful of cameras back in those days, it was completely mechanical. The only thing that it needed a battery for was to meter. So what I've found is that it's always nice to have one of these completely mechanical cameras around, just because you never know when you're in a situation where you wanna have a camera that's always operational, regardless of what kind of battery power that you have. So I love, I love the feel of this camera. I love the viewfinder. I love that it shows you the uh, shutter speed in the viewfinder and has a match needle metering system. The last F1 they released, which was called the new F1, had a lot of the same benefits, but a slightly different design. But every one of the F1s are really, really great cameras. Next up on the list is my Canon FTB NQL. This camera was essentially the little brother of the F1. Uh, it was also all completely mechanical, so it only needs the battery to meter. Physically, it's very similar size as the F1. Um, the differences that make it not so professional are the fact that you can't customize the focusing screen, you can't change the viewfinder, and it only goes up to one one thousandth of a second. Beyond that, this is a fully capable camera and can do a lot. I love that it's completely mechanical, and I really love the viewfinder. I love that it shows you the shutter speed in the, in the viewfinder, much like the F1. Not only that, but, but it also has a match needle metering system. The QL stands for quick load or quick loading. And that means that um, it has this feature in the back, which makes it really handy to load film into there. So unlike a lot of mechanical film cameras back in the day where you had to feed the film through manually, with this one, you just pull the film over to that red area hold it down and make sure this silver part closes on top of it. And then once once it's closed and you take a, a picture or two to wind it, the film loads onto the spool itself. That's really, really handy. And it might have seemed like a gimmick to a lot of people back in the day, but I find I, I really enjoy that feature of this camera. It makes loading and reloading film really, really convenient and reminds me of some of the features of the EOS film cameras that I love, which is the fact that it's really easy and quick to load film. And just like the F1, it's built really, really well, um, pretty much all metal. The negative of that, of course, is that it's, it's a bit heavy compared to some other film cameras, but it's really, really good quality and it's probably gonna last a really long time. Next up is a camera that probably looks really familiar, but it may be a specific model that you're not familiar with because I don't think it gets a lot of um, attention online, and that is the Canon AT1. This camera was released in 1976, a few months after the AE1, the original AE1 was released. Um, not the AE1 program, the first AE1. And this model has the exact same body design, pretty much, with a couple, with the exception of a couple buttons on on the side. 
So the biggest difference between this and the AE1 is that this has a match needle metering system. It's simple, but I prefer it to the information that the AE1 shows you in the viewfinder. This does require a battery to operate, but the batteries are fairly easy to find on the Amazon. The shutter sound on this is pretty cool. Fairly quiet, but still has a cool sound to it. Uh, it's built really well. And it's smaller in physical size compared to the F1 and FTB. So it's a little easier to carry around just because it's a little lighter. I do wish that this had the same grip type addition that you could put on the AE1 program and the new F1 which is a little, there's a little grip um, addition that you can put on those bodies. That would be nice if this had that. But overall, this is a really, really great camera because it is small. It has that match needle metering system. The shutter dial is easy to turn. And uh, the viewfinder is pretty large and clear. Yeah, I really like this camera. And to be honest, it might be one of the most underappreciated FD cameras in the Canon lineup. Okay, last but not least is a very unique camera from the Canon FD camera lineup. And it's one I was always curious about trying. And a few years ago, I found one online and picked one up. That is the Canon T90. So this looks completely out of place compared to the other ones. But what it shares with the other ones is it takes the FD lenses, the manual focus FD lenses. What's different obviously is that this was a completely redesigned body. This was almost like a bridge type camera that bridged the FD series of cameras, that manual focus line of cameras from Canon with the EOS film cameras that I talk about a lot, these autofocus cameras. And as you can see, if you compare this to the EOS one or the early EOS film cameras, there's a lot of similarities in design with those. It's very curvy. A lot of the controls and features are done just by a few buttons and dials. In Japan, I think in Japan, this camera was referred to as the tank. And if you feel how heavy and solid it is, you'll understand why. Um, it's definitely well built and it's fully featured. So minus the lack of autofocus, which came later with the EOS lineup, this camera has a lot of the luxuries that we've come to enjoy with EOS film cameras. It has a uh, Shutter speeds up to 1 4,000th, it has multi, multi metering modes, including spot metering. It has the film loading features that you're used to, where it's auto load. You, you put the film spool in there, drag it over to the orange area, make sure it's flat, close the door, and the film prepares for you. It loads for you. And it also has auto rewind and those features as well. It also has a built in motor drive, so you can take uh, shots up to 4.5 frames a second. You can operate it in fully manual mode or you can do aperture priority and things like that. I wouldn't say this is exactly like the Nikon F4, but you could say there's some similarities between this and the Nikon F4. Yes, the Nikon F4 was autofocus, but they both were bridging the gap between the old school cameras and the modern cameras. And I've used both and I like both. The Nikon F4 might edge this out overall with features, but this is really, really a great camera. And if you're looking for a camera body that can take FD lenses, but yet gives you some of the um, modern camera capabilities that you're used to, this is one to check out. You don't see these a lot online, but if you do and it's working, um, it's not a bad purchase at all if you have a collection of FD lenses. Now it doesn't give you the benefit of the original F1s or the FTB um, in terms of having an option for a completely mechanical camera in your kit that can shoot film no matter what's going on. This does require batteries, but right out of the box, it takes AA batteries as opposed to any sort of specialty camera battery or anything like that. So just like the F4, that's a plus, huge plus, I think. But overall, this camera is really nice to use. And it's definitely um, all about function. Although I think the design is pretty cool as well. So mixing these cameras in with my EOS film cameras, as well as some of the Nikon stuff I've shot with, is just one aspect of why I enjoy film photography. I can take one film stock, put it in multiple cameras, bounce between multiple cameras, multiple lenses, and get some consistency because of that film stock and the way I shoot it. But 
change some variables and have some choices on gear on size, features, um, details of lenses and whatnot. There's just something cool about shooting with some of these cameras sometimes, these old school manual focus cameras that make you slow down a little bit more to compose and focus the shot and think about what you're creating. So I'll make individual videos on these cameras over the next few months, but I just wanted to give you a basic overview and get you thinking about some of these cameras if you've thought about picking one of these old school cameras up. Let me know if you have specific questions on one of these models, the T90, the AT1, FTB, or F1, and I'll do my best to answer them and maybe include some of the information in the video when I make them. So that's it for now. Let me know if you have some old school manual focus cameras and what models you'd like. And like always, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate the feedback. I'm over 250 subscribers, which is amazing. Let's see how fast I can get to 300. So if you're watching this and aren't subscribed, help me get closer to 300. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon.